welcome, welcome. Today, our story of the dynasty of Mayurkid continues. Young Sultan Abdul was tragically bereft of his father at an age too young to rule, and now he must make the best of it. The Caliph, his guardian, wishes to push him in a more orthodox path, but he, influenced by his grandfather and his great-grandfather, desires to continue forward with his own unique style of ruling. Will he be able to juggle the influences of his various vassals and the Caliph himself? Will he find a way to solidify and finally consolidate the realm of Mayurkid? Let us find out together. Here we are with Sultan Abdul Ibn Yagmarison. Our guardian is still the Caliph, the Sunni Caliph, the head of the Abbasid Empire. We have a ton of things that we want to get done in this portion of our life. Big goals, cultural advancements, and possibly a new religion. So our counselors really don't like us, but it's much better than I thought it would be. We're going to try to take advantage of all the things we can do, including bestow favor, to try to get some of this bad opinion gone. A lot of this is just because I'm a kid and I'm a new ruler, but also there's a big chunk of negative that comes from the fact that I am not allied with most of these guys. So we kept Visigothic codes. The primary reason for that is that not like what happened in actual life, but what was written in Uzzah's book has made our culture believe that it was the mistreatment of his mother, the Christian slave girl by his father, that caused everything to go wrong. We need to raise our authority to high crown authority if we're going to use Visigothic codes to change it to equal. And the problem with that is we can't do that unless our powerful vassals like us and literally none of them do right now. That's something we're going to have to work on. Also, if we don't fix it, they will probably rebel. Young Abdul, would you dare to question my authority when it comes to matters of faith? No, Caliph, I would not. Would you dare to question my authority when it comes to the nature of your education and what you should be focusing your time on? No, Caliph, I would not question your authority, but I would prefer to participate. Child, you have no idea what's best for you. I've been hearing rumors from your tutors. Uh, what kinds of rumors, great Caliph? I've been hearing that you question my interpretation of the Quran. In what way, Caliph? Because of a desire that he imagined, a dream he had, about the fate of his mother and her misuse at the hands of his father. Yes, Caliph, but his mother was a slave, and she was mistreated. And I simply asserted that the Quran does not encourage either the mistreatment of women or, for that matter, of Christians. How can you say that? She was brought into a royal household. She was given every advantage. Caliph, her son was taken from her. And when, and when, what is it, boy? Do you wish to contradict me? No, no, Caliph, just, she should have been his wife. She was his wife. Uzzah claims in his book that they were legally married, and that the married marriage was, was absolved because, what are you saying? The marriage was absolved because she was a Christian. The marriage was absolved because it was uncomfortable. The idea that a man in charge of such an important island would marry a Christian slave. He was, he was, he was denied, he was denied his rights. He was denied the possibility of inheritance, even should his brothers die. He was exiled and sent away. And the treatment, the treatment his mother received was, was even worse. Only if you believe the biased tale that he tells in that horrid book he had written. You know, you know these tales are false. I know that my great-grandfather was the son of a Christian slave, and that her mistreatment at the hands of men who considered her to be insignificant drove him to a madness that caused him to kill many people, both guilty and innocent, to avenge her, and that that was wrong according to both the teachings of the Quran and by my understanding of worldly justice. I'm glad to hear it. Please, I only wish for you to have an easy time, for your life, for your life to be without great strife. There will be much stress for you when you come to fully take control of the lands that are yours by birthright. Do not add to that weight concerns which are outside of your station. Of course, Caliph, 
I bow to your superior understanding of Allah and the Quran, as it should be. Someday, someday the situation will change. If it is within my power to do so, I will make the changes required. Now, in my lands that I control, that had they been instituted long ago, would have prevented the tragedy that drove my great-grandfather to madness. Had her rights been appropriately protected as the wife of an emir, had she been respected as an individual, treated with the same consideration as a man would have, then my great-grandfather would never have gone mad, and he would have lived out his life in obscurity and peace. And that, I suppose, is the irony of it. I wouldn't even be, wouldn't even be Grand Emir of Meherkid had the world been a more just place. But as Allah has blessed me with rewards created through injustice, it is my duty to fulfill the promise of those rewards by bringing into the world the justice that it lacks, caliph or no caliph, tradition or no tradition. Sultan Abdul, especially since he's been mistreated by the Caliph as a guardian, the two of them really do not get along. He kind of takes Uzzah's side when it comes to matters of religion and rebellion. Unlike his grandfather, who thought that the best way to move forward would be unifying the two Sunni faiths, it's very likely that Abdul is going to make it his purpose to change his religion so that it is more enlightened and more in line with the Visigothic codes. So to validate our claim to a religious dominance, or at least independence, we need to take the holy sites over here in the west, the one in Iberia and then the one down here in North Africa. We do not want to take this whole kingdom, we just want to take a couple of duchies up here. After that's done, our idea is to take Andalusia, Valencia, and Badajoz. The difficulty is that in order to get our vassals to support us, we're going to need to unify the kingdom of Africa. The reason we have stuff... Oh, uh, Magson died. That is our marshal, and he was really good too. Our best alternative, I guess, is Amir Lot. He does not like us. He is he is the Amir of Egypt. Uh, we, we don't want to become zealous this way because we are breaking away from his faith. That's for sure. So this is our last Meet the Peers event. Um, oh, we are going to become, I think, diligent of those two. We didn't do too good in the last couple of these. In fact, we did quite badly. I only got to do one of them before we started recording. He was a little too old. So the first one would have been done, probably didn't even get done, but it would have been selected before poor Yegmarison died. Oh, stop being ill, that's good. Uh, I, I will save him. We'll do that. Hopefully we don't get wounded. Hopefully our luck streak breaks. Oh, we didn't get wounded. Hey, this one, we failed this last time. We got the stewardship this time. That's... we didn't do good on either of these last time. I want the learning. Okay, good learning. And that is our last childhood event. We will not have time before we grow up to do another. Uzmir has died. Uh, that was the guy that we were doing bestow favor on. What a waste. And what's worse is he wasn't a great steward, but we don't have anybody who's even as good as him. We are in a bad steward position, I guess. Ahmed, that's you. You get to be steward now. I wish there was someone better. Just change this to the capital. They have to wonder why the Caliph is wearing his armor when we're out finding cats in the garden. But, you know, whatever. Whatever. I mean, I'm obviously a huge threat to his adultness. We are going to name this cat Snow. Hopefully it's white. We're going to imagine that it is. So as soon as I unpause, I should immediately age up. We did really good, I think. I don't know. It, we are... Learning educated, and the Caliph is a, literally a genius. He has a 50-ish learning. Yep, we are a mastermind philosopher. With the help of Caliph Nuruddin, I have achieved an understanding of scholarship that far exceeds that of any of my peers. That is exactly right. We got the you won't forget him anytime soon negative 10 penalty. Yeah, I mean, our relationship hasn't really been that great, but it hasn't been that bad either. It's going to get worse. Our intent is to conquer Iberia as politically as possible. We just want to prove we're the best candidate when we become Caliph. So we're going to start with diplomacy so we can get true ruler. So currently we are betrothed to a woman who gives us an alliance with one of the more powerful rulers of the Iberian Peninsula. Future vision right there. We're looking towards what we're going to do 
in the long term. I was hoping to find one of my vassals who had a daughter who was actually of age so I could take her as a wife while still remaining betrothed to the other person for the alliance. We need more alliances among our vassals to make us stronger, but there is literally nobody. Uh, none of them have of age unmarried daughters unless they're really weak. We need a wife near our age so we can start working on having an heir and someone who will help assist us in ruling. We're gonna s oh, she's at the top of our sum of all skills list for five years uh, within our age. That's actually the daughter of one of my very weak vassals. She does have some advantages and disadvantages. We rejected her from the original list because she's irritable, but she is my friend and it is, I mean, at least it's one of my vassals. He's not that important, but it will help somewhat i think we're gonna marry her mostly because she's my friend this chic here in the central capital county in uh the duchy of seville is pretty weak right now so we're just gonna go to war with him opportunistically so our troops have landed in cadiz and they're going to just surge right up take out his army and then siege everything down we have asked our ally amir umaya to join us. I don't think we need him, but it's better safe than sorry in case this guy buys mercenaries. Yep, that battle was easy. Even with the support, well, even with support of mercenaries, he did not really stand a chance against us. Uh, we're continuing to grow our favor with the people who are on our council, which should fix some of our problems. In fact, now that he's at 31, let's move the sway over here to Emir Lot in Egypt. Uh, this guy does not like us much at all. Really not at all. And he has attacked us again, and the battle is over. I'm gonna just try to keep ourselves from going in debt by ransoming this prisoner. And he has attacked us again, and we defeated him. He's probably just gonna attack us over and over again until something... Oh, that is interesting. So we have him, and we're just gonna enforce demands. So we have our foothold in southern Iberia. It's gonna... We're going to do everything here. We're going to change the faith, we're going to change the culture, and we're going to immediately try to control it. We're probably going to hold on to this duchy once Seville is taken, because it's really strong. Particularly, this county is really strong. It may one day become our future heartland. I don't think so, though. I think we're going to stay over where we are in Sardinia. So our capital here in Sardinia is actually not very well developed. We we haven't really been working on that. Every single one of our ancestors said they were going to do something about it, and literally none of them did. We may have to consider moving it to Seville. Uh, but our main focus right now is going to be the Kingdom of Africa. Amir Ahmed and Amir Zaglin have very strong duchies down here in what is the du jour Kingdom of Africa. In fact, we have had control over this through our vassals since... Our great-grandfather, Uza took it in order to help his ships reach Crete for the war against his father. The horrible war of many generations ago. As you can see, there's a lot of really weak individual counties here. And it's very likely, very likely that we can form the du jour kingdom of Africa. This kingdom. If we take all of them over, and that will give us a huge advantage because it will strengthen our hold over Africa and it will make our vassals like us more because they will be de jure vassals. Grand Amir, I must begin this conversation by saying that I am honored that you have agreed to this private tete-a-tete -tete with the two of us. Amir Bed, you are one of my most important vassals. Zalgin is is my trusted chancellor. We speak all the time. The, the two of you both know that I'm not a tyrant who would deny to hear your 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 complaints or or your needs uh by amir yes i have i have served you for a time now as your chancellor and you are right we know that there is there is justice in your decisions and that you see justice well when you assess a situation so we both believe that you will see justice in what we're going to ask you today the problem is the problem is grand amir that Long ago, your great-grandfather stole from my great-grandfather the independent rule of his territory for the petty reason that he wished to use his seaports to perpetrate his war of horrors against his own father. There are many people, many people, many of my own vassals who truly believe that, that this emirate does not 
consider us significant, that we are just a backwater, just a place to be used and forgotten. None of the resources or advancements that this emirate makes make its way down here to our coastal backwater. None of it. I think that is something of an exaggeration, my friend. I think, Abed, that, that there is a lot of resentment in that that I have not earned. I, I've done my best to take all of my vassals into consideration when I make decisions. Thou Gin, do you, do you support this belief? Well, my lord, there is the matter of the Berter populace. They, they don't have the same sentiments that we, we of noble blood do. They, they don't understand why a foreign ruler with such strange... Are you referring to the fact that I have brought forward the concept of equal inheritance as a law of this emirate? No, not specifically, although many also object to that. You know, I myself, I personally, I support the measure. I'm simply saying that they don't understand the situation. They think that a foreigner who cares nothing about our lands rules over us. They think that that foreigner is the great-grandson of a man who stripped them of their autonomy and their own way of life. Again, Abed, that, that is not true. That's not true. I have allowed you to have basically independent rule. My African territories are well managed by you and Zalgin. Why, why do you come to me with this? Is, is there something that you wish to ask? Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. We, we wish to make a suggestion. We want you to unify all of the small and petty independent counts in our region through that unification of Berter territory. We wish for you to declare yourself to be the rightful liege over our people. I thought your argument was that they thought that I was inconsiderate, that, that I was illegitimate, that I shouldn't be their liege. What we're asking for, my lord, my Amir, we're asking for legitimacy. This grand emirate is an emirate of multiple crowns, but there is no crown that represents the rule of Africa. There is no crown that legitimizes your rule at, at, over Africa at all. There is simply nothing that binds you to our people as their liege. And we think, we think that through this unification and then official declaration of formal relationships and vassalage between our clans, that we can begin the process of integrating ourselves into this, into this grand emirate as equals to the others, as men who don't hunger for crowns of their own, instead who serve rightfully under the ruler chosen for them by Allah, which, because of the nature of those people that we oversee, you must assert. So what you're saying is that you wish for me to unify the region around your, uh, around your, your emirates so that it will be easier for you to manage your own people? After a fashion, that is what we request. Formalization. Formalization. And this will, this will make the administration of your territory and the Grand Emirate as a whole more efficient and uh, more acceptable to the populations that you rule over. It will, Amir, it will. I prefer not to do such things through military means. There are times when the sword must be used, but I think you've convinced me this is one of them. Fine. I will begin a campaign in earnest to pacify the independent counts in the region around where your rulership is. And then once it is done, I will declare myself the king of that land, the king of the African coast. And that is what you want? There is nothing we want more than that. Well, there is one other thing. Always another thing, Zagin. Always another thing. What is this other thing, Zagin? Um, when you take those lands that are adjacent to our territory, we feel that it's just. Yes, we have decided amongst ourselves that it would be just. If you would divide them amongst us evenly, do what you will with those that are distant. But, but in addition to this formalization of my rulership of your peoples, you also wish to expand your own territory and power. It is only fair. We will be declaring official vassalage to you. We will be swearing our acceptance of you as king. 
we should gain something from it. Yes, uh, yes, we should gain something from it. Fine, of course. I just hope that this creates the the unity that, that you profess. I would hate for this conflict to make things even more unstable in Africa. We're not going to delay on this. We're just going to go right through with it. I want Abdul to only really war when he's young. I want all of the wars he needs to get done in order to solidify his realm while he's still, you know, before he's 40. I want his later life to be focused on peace and religion and taking over Iberia with vassalization. So we're going to do these right now. The only difficulty is deciding which one we're going to do first. I think... I think we're going to just go with this guy first. He's pretty weak. He has no allies. And I think we can get him done right away. Just to begin these campaigns and the consolidation of this kingdom. So our armies are going to march down there. We're still having some difficulty with our counselors not being happy with us. But most of that's cleaned up. Mostly it's just, just Egypt now. Once our armies are gathered here, he really will have no place to flee to. Oh, he wants me to join his war in Iberia. He He's being attacked. Uh, the problem is I can't really help him even if I want to. My campaign in Africa means my troops will literally never get there, even if I finish the battle. I mean, we will, we will agree to help him in principle, but I don't see how it's going to happen. I mean, asking us to come to war when they're, we're in the middle of a literal campaign in Africa very far away is a risky endeavor. Our troops are consolidated and the battle is about to take place. There really is no chance. Uh, our master of the hunt died. I don't even remember who this guy is. Anyway, he really has no chance against us. We're four times larger than him. Yeah, this battle is really nothing. He had nowhere to flee. Well, I mean, he could have fled, I guess, I don't, but I mean, why would he? If he doesn't win, he doesn't stand a chance, right? It's just a siege now. In spite of our conflict with the Caliph, we are going to pay homage as is expected. And there is the end of the siege. And we have begun to take over all of the counties we need to in order to consolidate this area. Something that probably should have been done by one of our ancestors. Uh, I, I can't... I'd also like to consolidate Egypt eventually, but that is a post-Iberia goal. And I think if we're going to con conquer all of the uh, Umayyad territory in southern Iberia, we're just not going to live long enough to also conquer Egypt. Unless things go extraordinarily perfectly, let's just enforce our demands and the war is over. It's essential that this war furthers the ambitions of both al Hayed and Zalgin, our two dukes down here, our two emir. So I am going to give Zalgian uh, the county we just took. There's no way to make the de jure work down here. There's just too much weirdly held territory. And then al is going to get the next county that we take. We're just going to do this right now. There's no point in waiting. He is very weak. Very, very weak. So let's declare our war for the county. We are raising our troops. Oh, our ally lost his war. That's not unexpected. I am somewhat concerned that he's going to attack us opportunistically what we muster, but it shouldn't be too long. I mean, the last war was in Africa. Our troops shouldn't be that hard to uh, to muster, but it is it's taking quite a while. And we have learned the language of our vassal in Egypt, finally. We are going to sway him. He is our strongest vassal with the lowest relations. Egypt is a big concern still. And we have won the first battle. Oh, our wife does not like snow. Let's give the cat to his her father oh 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 a uh, liberty demand uh the faction i knew the faction existed but i was ignoring it because they're not very strong i really didn't think they would do it but i guess it just compares to my troops not to the troops of my ally right yeah they all together they are technically stronger than me i think i can win it and it's gonna set me way back if i have to give up the um, the authority. One of the guys in here, uh, this guy, he holds the territory. Is it that guy? I don't know. One of them holds the last county in Sardinia. So we're going to call our ally in. Uh, it's too bad we couldn't support him in his last war, but that's what he gets for calling us to war when we are mustered in Africa. Uh, this guy, we're just going to have to try to manipulate him. Good, we got the hook. And yeah, once the siege is done, we'll take this over and we're going to have to figure out how to do this. The difficulty is since we're a nation of islands there 
well, not difficulty, actually, advantage for us is that as a nation of islands, it's going to be hard for them to consolidate faster than we can do everything. We're going to hire some... Mm, uh, I was going to raise my guys and hire some mercenaries. It's going to put us into huge debt, but we cannot afford to lose this war. It is absolutely essential that these people understand that what we state, our concept of the future of this nation, is the reality that they're going to have to deal with in the future. We are going to continue to push our authority. Authority is necessary for us to create the equal nation that we imagine. So we've won our African war, which means we can begin to move our troops. As I said, Visigothic codes are going to be integrated into this nation, whether they like it or not, into this kingdom, into this sultanate. They are going to just have to accept it. I'm relatively certain that we can defeat them here. I'd like to take Befriend, but we need to get True Ruler quickly. Okay, so our troops are now coming. There is a battle that's going to take place down here in the south. We're just going to hold until all of our troops are gathered. Our ally is also present. And then hopefully we can fight them and defeat them. We won the first important battle with the help of our allies. We broke them in Oristano. Uh, we're going to have to siege up here, I think. Amir Al-Aladin, come in. You are welcome here. Since you are not a rebel, you can definitely pay homage. Our spymaster, on the other hand, was a rebel. We don't have much we can do about this. I guess we can put Zalgin in there temporarily. And that leaves us with Amir Al-Aladin, who just paid homage to put in his place. We are sieging. I have split our army. We're going to send one group north in order to try to see if we can convince them to break their siege. And we have. And then we are going to continue to finish this siege. Hopefully this war will be over soon. Yeah, we're never going to catch them. So we're just going to turn around and reinforce our ally is bringing his troops back in. Uh, he learned Berber. That's cool. That was Zagin. Okay. I really... Uh thing is, I need a spy master as close to 15 as possible so that we don't get completely screwed. Uh, our first debt penalty in this war. I wish this war didn't happen. Their treachery will not go unpunished. We will fight them up here in Tripoli. We will break their army again. Continue pushing towards victory. We're going to have to go down to Pal Palermo and siege it out. We really don't have a choice. Oh, he is going to try to win that siege up there in Corsica. They're going to end at basically the same time. So he's going to successfully siege down that county up there in Corsica. And we have finished down here in Palmero. Now, I, I, it's hard to decide. We're going to have to go back over to the mainland. They tried to catch us when we landed, but it did not work out for them. We have now defeated them in battle, and we will enforce our demands. You know, I'm generally not a cruel man, but this rebellion must be punished harshly so the rest of my vassals understand the situation. We're going to be stripping titles and executing. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll ransom, depending. We are going to not ransom him yet. We need to strip his title first, right? Yes. So each one of these guys is going to have their titles revoked and we're going to revoke their titles, even if it's an act of tyranny. And then we are going to ransom them back to themselves. This is what happens to traitors. This needs to be remembered. And the last one, we're going to revoke his title. Now, because he has two emirates, we are going to have to get some tyranny in order to strip him of all of his titles. But uh, we will. We're definitely going to do it. Revoke his title again, even though it's tyranny. Nothing we can really do about that. He deserves it. Nobody who is willing to rebel against me in my holy mission is going to be allowed to remain a vassal in my sultanate. The caliph has made us his steward. We're not that good at it, but it's, uh, it's free money, right? We're going to have to figure out what to do. So I'm basically just picking people of the right culture who seem like they don't have terrible traits. And putting them in charge. We've got this shy guy here. We're going to grant him some territory. Uh, we're going to put him into Crete. So this one county title right here. He served good as a warrior. And he is, he is the right culture. I don't think we're going to grant him anything else here. I guess we could put him in charge of Crete. Let's put him in charge of Crete, right? I mean, he's new. He can't be worse than the last guy. He can't be worse than the last guy. This guy here, maybe. We're trying to peek 
pick people of appropriate cultures, as I said previously, with good traits. We don't want anybody who's going to cause problems for us. I'm going to give this guy, like, you know, three is too much. Three is too much. Let's just give him two on the coast there. Congratulations. And our brother here, we've decided that we're going to elevate his position. He only inherited a single county upon the death of our father, so now we're just going to correct that by giving him basically most of Sicily. And then we're going to also give him the Emirate of Sicily. This territory is consolidated under people that I think will not trouble us again. Hopefully the rest of my vassals learned from this experience that in spite of the fact I talk more peacefully than my ancestors, I still have some of that cruelty in me. This, uh... Mayor Kid Blood is still hot, and we do anger very easily, especially when we're talking about traitors. As previously promised, we are going to give this county to Ahmed, and that will balance out the uh, expansion of both of our two African vassals. Next, we need to begin to conquer the territory up north. Now that my dominance is unquestioned within the Sultanate, we must focus on the goal of consolidating the Kingdom of Africa. We need, as we just saw, two more counties at minimum. I, I would like to start getting to work over here. There's a lot of people that are weak at this time that I, I hope don't gain any power while I am out in Africa. But if they do, we'll just have to contest with it at the time. Ugh, this guy, for one, he uh, he's the guy who defeated our ally. And my heir is born. We're just going to let him be named after us. Uh, our wife thinks it's a good idea, so we're just going to let it pass. Okay, we are finally starting to gain control over our territory. We now control all of Sardinia ourselves personally. There is still no better chancellor. It's it's not a great idea. I am tempted to put um, the other Amir Al-Aladin, this guy, in. Yeah, we're going to do that. Sorry, buddy, but... Uh, we never really wanted you there in the first place, and we need our chancellor back doing his job. Let's begin declaring these wars. These three little nation, these three little little guys here, these uh, independent counts, they all are allied to each other. So this is going to go hilarious for them. Come in, Amir Nazar. Come in. This is the new guy. <laughs> the guy that I just elevated. Oh, the Pope wants to talk. Well, I'll send letters to the Pope. Why not? Right. We'll send letters to the Pope. Talk about theological stuff. I think it's time to begin pushing the orthodox religious minority out of our sultanate, starting with Napoli, the capital of my brother's territory. Oh, Pope, you loved my discussion with you about theology. That's actually hilarious. Let's, uh, and I got the 300 experience for continuing to exchange letters. All good effects. We're going to take inspiring rule. Getting closer to true ruler. It really doesn't matter which one of these we go after first. It really doesn't matter at all. We probably should go after the strongest one first. Um, I'm not even going to check. I'm just going to do this guy. Uh, no, no, the strongest one first is better. It will make the other two wars a lot easier. These poor guys, <laughs> they don't know what's coming. Our strength can only grow. Uh, you know, we're just going to do this guy. They really don't stand a chance. We don't even need our ally. We're going to crush them right away. And we've won the first battle. Now it's just a question of sieges. And there's the siege. And we now won the war. First of three. Second of three. Conquer his county. Their their strength is becoming weaker because each one of their allies I take out. The next one of them gets weaker. There's just nothing to do about it. <sighs> Poor Chancellor. Finally dead. After all these years. All right, Al-Aladin, you're back in. I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't really think it has anything to do with me. It's just a liberty war. That's for him to manage. Not. It's, it's not my problem, really. I wish they wouldn't do it, though. When we siege this down, it's going to be the second of our three conquests in Africa. We now have enough to form the kingdom, but we're just going to finish the whole thing. We're not going to wait. If we attack them again, the, the losses from the last war will affect the next guy. I think... I think this guy we're going to put in charge. We have too many territories. So just before we declare our last war, we're going to put this guy in charge up here. These are all like part of two different duchies. There's no way to make this really strong. So we'll just put him in charge and, and figure it out later. Right. We may give him one of the titles up here in spite of the fact it won't be technically correct du jour. 
Let's declare this last war and get this done with. Conquer County, declare war. Here we go. Once this is done, it's only going to be money between us and forming the Kingdom of Africa, which will consolidate most of our realm. And our son, just like us, is charming. Well, I think we're going to train him ourselves. We're pretty smart. We are a good diplomat. It seems suitable. Hopefully we get our pedagogy early enough to help him out. If, if not, oh well. Never mind this weird patrol, though. I, I'm just going to patrol ourselves and then marry this guy's daughter for an alliance. And the last war is finished. It's finished. It's finished. We have taken all of the territory, except for the one large duke down here in the Kingdom of Africa. Once we have the money, we can consolidate it into a single kingdom. We have these two northern duchies. What we're probably going to do is eventually form one of these titles and give it to the guy who holds territory up there. This guy here, we're going to try to get him to join us through peaceful means. He's going to be our first target for our campaign of, the, of vassal requests. That's why we married our son to his daughter. And we're just going to give this to this guy. Good. Prevents either of those two guys from getting too strong. The two county holder will become the duke eventually when we can afford to buy that. But we can't do that until after we've formed the Kingdom of Africa here. We have succeeded at our major goals already. So there we are. Our strength increases. Once we have that kingdom, the consolidation of it will cause us to gain a lot of troops because it will make a lot of our vassals like us more, which is really good when you're a clan ruler. These two wars down here do eventually have to happen. It's going to be tough to decide how to do it. I don't want to have that many wars in in Iberia. In fact, I'd like to take most of Iberia through peace, but I do have to gain the three titles required to turn Seville into a duchy. Thank you for the money. Yes, of course, you're welcome to come and pay homage. Uh, this guy's language is Sardinian. I probably should know Sardinian, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't think there's that many Sardinians left, but uh, I do rule over their, their ancestral lands. This is going to be like our first stress break. We're going to keep pushing, though. I don't want to back off. Right? We're young. We can handle a stress break. Yeah, we can handle a stress break. We're not our dad, right? Oh, athletic. That's like one of the best outcomes. This kid is amazing. He is going to rule the entirety of the Mediterranean Sea and most of Iberia. It's great. And we did it. We learned the language and we became athletic and we cleared our stress. All right. Welcome to my home, Abdul Ibn Yagamarasan, grandson of the renowned al Aladin of Merkid, great-grandson of the rightfully feared Uzzah, you are my honored guest. I am truly, truly glad that you have come to have this conversation with me yourself. Well, Amir, Gabrielle, I think that it was inevitable. I think that this conversation was going to have to happen. And I think, I think as well, you should know that I have great respect for you as a man. What do you know of me as a man? What do you know of my family? What do you know of my right to rule? What do you even know of this region? As far as I can tell, you're an outsider. Nothing that any of your envoys or either of your two buffoons to the West have said to me would even begin to convince me that I would be better off as a vassal of this newly minted kingdom of the African coast than I would be simply remaining independent. Ah, yes, but that's not the only thing that we offer. We also offer peace. Grand Amir. You begin with a threat? No. No, not at all. Not peace from us. Peace through us. Aside from the grand Abbasid Empire, of which we are vassals, there are few powers in this region that are stronger than Merkid as it currently stands. And as we continue the work to unify the crowns that have been held either technically or literally by my family for over two generations, it is only... Right, that we invite those who, who neighbor us to share in our prosperity and profit from our protection. You should have come yourself to begin with. Those others, they, they're too selfish. To them, it's, it's too much about what they want. This, this, what you're saying to me now, I can't say that I agree, but I understand the concept better than simply bowing because you ask it. Your strength does grow, and it will grow faster with your participation. 
We control nearly every port of significance on an island in the Mediterranean, and we are beginning to control more of those ports along the coast that matter. Mayorkid is the future of trade in this region, and <laughs> the Italians are beginning to become jealous. Jealous of wealth held by any non-Christian leader. Our unified power has more chance to stand against them than we do as individuals. And you know this to be true. Yes, Italy has become more threatening, as have the Greeks, for that matter. Grand Amir, no, you may, you may call me Abdul. All of my friends call me Abdul, and I hope that one day we will be friends. Then Abdul, I do not know. I do not know if I can be convinced that what you're saying is true. I don't know that it's in my interests, but I will say this. You coming here and stating your case yourself... The great respect that that represents, considering the differences in our station, and the fact that you didn't come here with the intent to threaten me militaristically, they're great influences. I don't know that I can overcome the religious difference. Many of my vassals, they follow different paths through the Quran. You would be no different. I will take that as a given. Then let us begin our dinner and end the conversations related to politics with this. I do not know that I agree with your proposal, but I will say that you have me at least thinking about it. Well, whether you agree or not, we will remain friends. And I wish, I wish to formalize that. I propose that even if you do not agree to joining Mayorkid as a vassal, that we create an alliance between our clans through the marriage of your daughter to my son. That, that's acceptable. That's, yes, we will have an alliance. Our children will be married. Praise Allah. This friendship that we have started today can only bring good things to our houses and our clans. So that's 78 looks pretty bad, but we do not yet have true ruler. And we haven't yet set our court diplomatic because we're still sort of building things. Once those two things happen, it's probably going to put him within, I don't know, 20, 15, 20. And we have a lot of points still to gain from becoming his friend. Here we are. Influenced by the mumbling of his vassals who believed that he was not legitimately their overlord because he did not rule the lands which they belonged to, our young and vibrant sultan has formed the kingdom of Africa and proved once and for all that Majorca, the realm, is the legitimate ruler of this region. It has helped us a lot with our vassals, but it hasn't fixed everything. We still need alliances. We, we gotta have some children. Hopefully we have a good mix of daughters and sons. You know, it's nice being a clan leader with uh, high partition, knowing that at very least our child is going to get our core area, our heir. We don't have to worry so much about having lots of kids, and that can help us create a ton of alliances. These guys, really the only thing that's hurting me now is... Yeah, the minus three for no alliance. And we haven't really done any effort with them. I haven't spent any sways on this guy yet. Oh yeah, I did sway him a little bit earlier. We have this guy who now likes us a lot more than he did a bit ago. He is difficult for us to sway though. See, we got the offer vassalage down to 42%. Now that we have begun the work, we have this masterful negotiator bonus and we definitely want that to go to him. He is the most important vassalage. The rest of the stuff we can find other ways to achieve, but getting... Getting Africa unified is going to be a big deal. True ruler will almost put him at the point where he'll join. Like, he might join right away. But there's nothing we can really do about that now. We have come so far. Oh, <laughs> this guy is hard for us to sway because he is... Because he's patient and we're impatient. It, it makes it difficult. But we are going to convince him. I know we will. Moving forward, our primary way of taking over territory is going to be diplomacy. We need to move away from warfare. There's a couple of more essential wars that we're going to need to do up in the Iberian Peninsula, but that's going to be the end of it. Once that's over, we're going to try to conquer the rest of the peninsula through diplomacy alone. Abdul has now added the Sultanate of Africa to the list of the titles his family controls. He pushes forward with his intent to rebirth the Umayyad Empire's dream of a brighter future. His war in Africa has pushed him in a direction that is much different from how he had dreamed as a youth it would be. And the great rebellion 
the Civil War drew out in him a cruelty that he did not know he possessed, a relic of his family's past. Will he be able to unify all of Iberia through peace? Will he be able to prove himself the intellectual and religious superior of the Caliph and bring forth his own new path to Allah? If you wish to find out, please join us next time. Thank you, and I hope to see you then.